Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're here... Wherever the fuck this is, it appears to be a replica of a TV studio in the Dark Place somewhere. Where uh, Alan has just finished having a uh, delightful interview with, uh... Well, with Mr. Door. More disturbingly, we've learned that, uh... Well, he was there to promote his new book, except his new book was called Initiation, Not the Return, and it was about Alan Wake having written a book he doesn't remember writing. Which is weird, because that's what Departure was about, the book he was writing during Alan Wake 1. Don't know what to make of that. It's very ominous. Shout out to Elthwar, who says that the uh, FBC sees a the AWE of Cauldron Lake and its related phenomenon as a phenomena as something that can be studied and even if not completely understood, controlled by rules. And the Dark Presence does follow rules, but they're narrative rules rather than mechanical ones. And that's uh, very alarming. I don't love that. Considering how the heart appears in the freezer, it gives the impression that the Dark Presence is adding things as Saga deduces them from the pages, which suggests something about how it can alter reality. Plus, it's hard to get a read on it, but I feel like the darkness is eager for this chance to break out. Uh... Oh, and shout out to Duffelfish, who says, Theory crafting here! What if the Dark Presence has already escaped from the threshold that is the overlap, and the dark place at the bottom of the lake is something it has created to hide itself? Also, to me, access to the overlap requiring a ritual is very much like the light switch and the ocean view motel. Oh, does that make the heart an object of power? These are very good questions, and I don't know the answers. I mean, I just threw out a crazy theory myself earlier, so I'm not going to look down on that one, certainly. It's a fun idea. Pretty sure the Dark Place is the name of an alternate dimension, but fuck if I know. Also, in what universe are the old gods of Asgard a, a house band for anybody? They're still, like, hard-drinking idiots who uh, get in trouble all the time. So, you know, when they were at their uh, peak, and these guys did look about 30, that, uh... They would what certainly the was that too interview? dangerous. Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. Hmm. I've missed you, Alan. Oh, fine. I'll go backstage. I have no idea where I'm meant to be going right now. Probably over there where it's lit up, but... Is that an axe? No, it's that light right there. On a side note, that bit with Alan going through the curtains, I'm pretty sure on actual talk shows, there's a guy who's, well, you know, it's like a stagehand, but one, one of his jobs is specifically to hold the curtain and pull it aside for the guests, uh, specifically to avoid them struggling with it and looking stupid as they step through. What are all these cables tied down? I mean, I don't doubt that they're there, I just don't know anything about, uh, film studios. In between, with Mr. Door. Look it up, his name between episodes. David Harewood looking good. Bandurim, Old Gods of Asgard. Old Gods of Asgard. That name sounded familiar. You can't remember the first game or something? Six six five, neighbor of the beast. Did they just have that neon sign made themselves because it was cool, or is that like a beer or something? Oh, what do we got here? Old gods of Asgard. No, it's too dark to read. Uh, this one's take control. I feel like that symbol was in control somewhere. Old gods of Asgard, the Sea of Night. It's a great name for an album. I mean, the booze I was expecting. The fact that there's no drugs in here, I was not. Yeah, they were like four guys who all changed uh, their names to the names of Norse gods. 
and uh, that was their performance persona. So it's Tor and Odin Anderson, brothers who were the leads. And then it was, uh, fuck, I don't remember the guy's last name, but one of them changed his name to Loki, and he just straight up vanished after a while. No one knows what happened to him. And the fourth member was the only one who didn't change his first name, Big Bob Balder, who uh, died of cancer uh, at about the time when they were calling it quits on the band. Mr. Door, hello? I was a mess. I had never heard of this talk show or Mr. Door before. None of it felt right. Was I losing my mind? It's like he's suffering from senility or something. Oh, hey, look! Upper left, it's Sam Lake. I thought that was Alan Tudyk at the bottom for a second there. Oh, wait. And Alan's up there, too. With a fucking signature and everything. I'm very surprised that uh, Sam Lake is not doing the Max Payne face. As a reference to the first game. Zane, classic in theaters. Yes! Uh, 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 Thomas Zane. Uh, he was the... The avatar for the, uh, uh, the bright presence, I guess you could call it. The, uh... Yeah, the idea was he, he was a poet. The dark presence deliberately drowned his girlfriend, Barbara Jagger, in order to trick him into trying to bring her back to life using his writing, but all it did was resurrect her body and allow the dark presence to put itself inside of it. She came back with darkness in her eyes. So he instantly realized, oh fuck, this isn't her, I've made a terrible mistake, puts on his old-timey diving suit, because he had a hobby of diving, takes her in his arms, and throws them both to the bottom of the lake forever. Uh, he, before he did that, he did something. He wrote something so that everyone in the world would forget about him and Barbara Jagger for the most part, except for things that he left behind in a shoebox. Seems that he accidentally gave every shoebox the ability to, uh, you know, ignore alterations to reality. But, uh, in, in Control, there was a weird, like, hint around the edges, like a peripheral subplot, where uh, someone would bring up Thomas Zane the poet and someone else would correct them to say that he was a movie director. So Zane Classic in Theaters, they're pushing that forward. So what have we got here? We got Interpretation of Many Worlds by Dr. Casper Darling! Huh. Who is uh, voiced and played by, if you look at the photo there, by the guy who voices Alan Wake, Matthew Peretta. My interpretation of many worlds, Dr. Casper Darling. Good to see you, Casper. Oh, I can't even open it. That's depressing. Screenshot. Hey! I think I've been locked in! Anybody? Fuck. Now I have to find the code myself. Great. Right, three-digit code. Okay. Oh. Three-digit code. Six, six, five. Huh. I can be dumb sometimes, like when I was ignoring the, uh, the case board. But, you give me a great big three-digit number on a neon sign, and it's gonna stick out in my memory. Why is the place creaking like here. it's underwater? A broken transmission I couldn't quite make out. There is a broken TV just there. Static on it. Oh good, it's me again. Oh, I saw a glimpse there of the shot from the beginning of the game oh, with Alan. That? Oh. A message? I didn't hit A. Impossible to say. Fuck. I didn't hit A. I should have hit A. Oh, fuck. If I do that, well... Was that after or before the, uh... Oh, well, we'll find out.
Okay, I did have to go through the cutscene again, but... Honestly, I just poked around Twitter while I waited. <laughs> I didn't want to skip it, because, again, this is the sort of game that would mess with your head like that. I did notice another thing, though. Hey! I think I've been locked in! Anybody? Fuck. Now I have to find the code myself. There was another one on this door Great. I didn't notice. Incredibly, that doesn't work either. And now we know. So I just come back here and put in the number. I'm gonna go over here and hit A. There was something here. A broken transmission I couldn't quite make out. What was that? Hmm. A message? Oh, impossible to say. There was a glimpse in there of, a sh of the very first shot in the game of Alan with a glowing spot on his forehead, like light coming out of his forehead, and darkness floating around at the back of his head as if it was liquid. And... I don't know. No? Murderer stalks shadows. Murder cult rumors spread. I don't like the imagery, and I especially don't like the imagery when combined with the fact that Alan started this sequence by being startled and grabbing at his forehead. Ooh, it's, this whole hallway is swimming. I thought there was an interact right here. Limu, lime lemon, ah, so fresh. I hate that. There was something in the studio with me. I had to get out. If this is the dark place, then... There's always something with you, Alan. And the moment you become afraid of it, there it will be. That's what I'm imagining. It's not a rabbit at all, is it? I don't... Oh, God. It's in the room! For air. This place felt familiar. Bird leg cabin. A ghost of a memory surfaced about riding here for countless days. No goals. Why did I not realize this would be the mind place for Alan? Why? Well, I'll start with the obvious. I had been writing. Initiation. You must write to escape. That's what Zane told me last time I saw him. My understanding was that the actual soul of Thomas Zane had been sent off to the afterlife so that it could be with Barbara Jagger, but uh, the Bright Presence kept his body as an avatar. Once I destroyed her uh, body, I mean. He'd been in there for the uh, the first game, at least. Initiation draft one. Board for mapping out a story. On the index cards, the nightmare that just happened to me. A summary of the story so far. 
but other notes as well. Warnings. I had written them. I couldn't remember what it all meant. The name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. He said it. I had to act on them. You must write to escape. Is that in his pocket? Little metal loop hanging from his belt. The plot board. I can't zoom in here. I have to hit A on the thing. Waking up to a nightmare. Okay, part one, late night. That is, in fact, the name of this chapter. Read me, beware, scratch, Alice. I can't uh, get any additional information from that. Uh, waking up to a nightmare. The talk show I had I thought... Have to write more. At the talk show, I thought I was home in New York, but none of it had felt right. I was trapped in the dark place, a nightmare beyond our world. The writer's room was my safe haven. My writing affected what was outside. I was trying to write a story to escape this place. This story was called Initiation. With the story I wrote, I projected myself out to look for a way to escape. I had tried many times. Failed. This place made me forget. Everything Dor said had felt true. Was that part of my writing or coming from somewhere else? The dark place, trapped, you must write to escape. Get back to writing. I had to keep writing. For the record, I uh, play video games to get away from that kind of stress, but... Uh... I couldn't leave. I this wasn't it. the way out. Oh, this isn't the actual layout of the cabin. This is just one big room. The office with this in it well, only stopped about here. And uh, there were, should be doors leading off to the sides to the master bedroom and the bathroom. It wasn't a very big house. I didn't remember much. But I knew my thoughts and ideas could manifest as reality in this dark place. I'd use my writing to project myself out of this room. Like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. Hmm. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. I would start again at the talk show. Did it again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Welcome back. Uh, we have a great show for you here tonight. We'll treat all you Alex Casey fans. You didn't say that the first time. Alex Casey himself is here tonight. That's right. Fair right, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? The actor who has given his face to the famous detective in the film series. The actor. And of course, we have Alan Wake here. Best selling writer, the books, the films. Are based off. Let's do this! He got a standing ovation for getting his name mentioned the first time around. Oh, right, yeah, okay, fine. It's so stern in that image. Welcome back to the show. So, Alan, as the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? I know it can be an awkward question to the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? <laughs> he looks exactly like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh, what's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I, I, I feel protective about my stories, and these adaptations... I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well, in that case, you won't have seen this either. 
We have a clip from the new film, Murder Case Case. That's a terrible title. Should we roll it, or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I mean, that sounds like Max Payne. I was trying to track down a missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp shaped like an angel. The only thing to shed light on this sordid mystery. That's great. Murder case, Casey. Great job, Sam. Very exciting and very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? This seems familiar. Hello? So Sam and Mr. Door are gone. So now we've got Sam... So in addition to, uh... Alex Casey, real person who doesn't like the movies, who but is also voiced by the voice of Max Payne and has the face of Max Payne... Oh, that's just a stage spot. I mean, like, they open... Yeah, uh, Mr. Door stands right here, so when they open the curtains, he can just, like, spread his arms and go, Hello, everyone! And walk out onto stage. Like, that's his cue. But these weren't on the floor last time. This room is blank. Or I was unobservant. One or the other. One of those. <laughs> Oh shit, there's the timer. Gotta find me a checkpoint, or a save point. One of those. Old gods of Asgard. Yeah, it figures they wouldn't keep the lighting up too hard. They're probably hung over 24-7. 6 5-6-5. Is that what that is? It's, it wants me to enter them in a different order? The, no, no, that's not a different order, it's just different. Yes, yes. My interpretation of any worlds, Dr. Casper Darling. I wonder where these pills are. What the fu- God damn it! Black Pyramid brand, uh, cigarettes? <laughs> that's a- Uh, everywhere in control that- yeah, the, the, the board exists on, an, on, a di on another another plane of existence called uh, the Astral Plane. And uh, anywhere you go where the board are in control, you can see this enormous black pyramid in the distance that you can't reach. It's all over the FBC's uh, symbology. See what happens if I enter the wrong one. Nope. Clear. Five, six, five. Work that time. But this is the scary room. Well, the TV's not sending me a message this time. Ocean View Motel, huh? So I guess that, uh, the physical motel must be somewhere on the edge of the dark place. That's why no one can find it. Damn it! I really hoped I wouldn't have to go back into the room with all the suit jackets. Classic Das. That's just a reflection. Great. And I'm running. 
Oh, uh, it just worked. Hello? I had wondered if the uh, the janitor sign I whoa that room is very swimmy. If the janitor sign I saw earlier in the middle of the floor had been there in the, uh, before because it reminded me of something that happened in Control when I encountered that guy. Janitor's office, huh? What's up, Ati? Long time no see. Ah, there you are, Tom. Tom. Not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. What? Not one without the other. <laughs> good to see you. I forgot how incomprehensible he can be at times. He also likes to say Finnish idioms in English so that they don't make any sense. You know, it'd be like saying put your nose to the grindstone to someone who didn't know that that means, uh, you know, work harder. In one case, he said, uh, there's something, you know, he said there's something suspicious about this situation by saying, there's a dog buried in this. I'm looking for the exit. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? <laughs> of course. Of course, Tom. Oh, that wasn't a translation. The Dirk will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but you can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the saying. I'm sorry, have we met? Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place, too? You remember Arti, the janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. So don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. What's in the basement? What do you want me to get from the basement? A and my name's Alan, not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got up a man's. A man, but a man with a tool makes two, Tom. Egane. <laughs> and a man with a tool can build his own exit. It's in a shoebox in the basement where you left it. <laughs> Safe as in the Lord's purse. Here's the key. Thank you. I really like that I can see his name tag just says Ati. Do you know how I can escape? I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mouths about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. This whole sequence the started. was a bit out there, but still a friendly face. I had to trust the basement would get me out of here. This entire sequence started when uh, Alan saw a puddle of water on the floor and was reminded of the dark place. Uh, oh! Yeah, that's a... <laughs> he was listening to that music at one point uh, in control. And I think that jacket is from the janitor's assistant outfit. But I might be out to lunch there. Also, his, uh... His, uh, calendar says February, so he's kind of down of a date. Well, uh, I am going to call it here, even if I do have to, uh, start a bit of the next episode. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Alan Wake 2, when we continue our insane journey. Till then, till then, do like we do, and stay in the light. Wait.